Welcome to Lifestyle Profiles. I'm Wendy McGowan Ellis, and this week our guests are from the only Masonic Lodge here in Frisco. Today we have David Barnes. Welcome. Please. And Bill Foreman. Hi. Wonderful to meet you. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for having us. So I understand that the Masonic Lodge is celebrating its 120th birthday here in Frisco this, this very soon. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. December the 7th, uh, we're celebrating 120 years of masonry in, in the Frisco, North Texas area. Our lodge was uh, established and chartered in 1899. Okay. And it has uh, been active through the city uh, from its inception. You have quite the history it does. here. So now tell me both of your backgrounds. Are y'all from Frisco or how quickly did you get here? I was born and raised here. Oh my goodness. Uh, the, okay. The first 10 years of my life uh, was spent with my family about five miles west of downtown Frisco on a ranch owned by Mr. B.F. Phillips. Okay. Who was a, a big quarter horse raiser. Uh, he, he bred and raised good cutting horses as well as some uh, world class race horses. Okay. And then. Uh, after that, my dad took a job with uh, Otis Elevator in Dallas, and we moved to town at that point. And I went to school here from first grade all the way through the 12th. What was the population when you were growing up here? When I graduated in 68, there was approximately 1,800 people. Oh in the whole gosh. Thing. Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> we, we had 36, I had 36 classmates in, in my class. In your class. graduating class. Okay. All right, Bill. Yes. Uh, myself, I, I'm from Houston originally. I became okay. a Mason in the Houston area and came to Dallas about 20 years ago. And in 2007, I was looking for a lodge to become active in, and here was Living in Lodge. It was very quiet, very small, and that's when I met Brother Barnes here and a few other, other brethren, and that's when the rubber hit the road. Okay. All right, so to, for those who don't know, my grandfather was a Mason, so now I, I know a little history. But for those who don't know, tell us the history of the Masons just very quickly in a nutshell, because I know that's a big, long story. But then how did they come to be started here in Frisco? Well, Masonry uh, in general is the oldest, largest fraternity in the world. And uh, you can go anywhere in the world and find a Masonic Lodge. Okay. And uh, in, in Frisco, uh, when Frisco was uh, chartered or established, uh, a Masonic Lodge is soon to follow. Okay. Because that's what they did back in those days. And Masonry itself is effectually the cement of society. Okay. It's a, it's, it's a fraternity, as Brother David said, of men who have an agreement, a common denominator of virtues on how to behave with one another without a force of religion or a dictator or politics. Right. Those elements are not allowed in our practice. We consider ourselves a craft, okay. a practice of decency, upstanding right conduct, and practicing charity mainly. Uh, the principal tenets of our profession are brotherly love, relief, and truth. And throughout history, as anybody watches television or talks to anyone on the internet, Masonry has a lot of different interpretations, but the cement of it, the foundation, the support of it is about virtues in your heart and recognizing charity for others. Okay, and so what what activities or events do y'all hold here in town? What, like, what are your works that you're doing? Well, I'm the Worshipful Master of the Lodge this year, which okay. is actually Worshipful Master is a colloquial term, which means the most respected in the Lodge. In other words, the leader of the Lodge. And in that, we are starting to get our footprint out of the lodge into the community, like getting a part with the rail district. Uh, we have a gala once a year. We've just established that. And we're going to be inviting the public since we've had a test run with it. Excellent. When is that happening? Well, we're hoping it will be in March, okay, uh, March of next year. year. And right. it, it was, it's a fundraiser exceptionally for the lodge, so since because we're a charity, uh, we have uh, to find means to operate. But also, too, it's in succinct with a Scottish Rite Hospital. That's yes. Here. Yes. So those are some of the things that we're looking to make more visibility with. Um, of course, the open house is one. And right. just opening the doors to our neighbors. We, we open our lodge to quilt clubs, uh, VFW, uh, motorcycle clubs, bicycle clubs, free of charge. Wow. Uh, as well as some of them are members of our lodge. But in coming in that, we invite our neighbors to kind of get an idea of what we're really about instead of the myth. 
Okay. So were y'all a part of Scottish Rite Hospital coming up here? Did y'all have conversations with them? We did. Okay. Uh, it was made known early on that uh, the Scottish Rite Hospital was moving to Frisco, or at least another uh, source. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so we were able to attend the uh, grand opening. The grand opening. The cornerstone laying was quite impressive. We had yes. several grand masters here. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's hear how both of you became involved with the organization. What's your story there, David? Well, first of all, uh, masonry, you, you can't, uh, we, we don't go out and solicit members. Okay. To become a mason, you have to ask a mason, how do I become a mason? So my dad was a, a master or a member of this lodge in Frisco. And as a kid growing up, you, you saw uh, it. on Saturdays, uh, he was a secretary part of the time. And okay. He would come up on Saturdays and do lodge work, secretarial work. And, and, and I'd just come along as a little kid and play in the room there while he was doing his stuff. Right. And, and then once a week, he would, you know, get dressed up and go to a meeting. And that's all I knew. Okay. When I graduated high school, I, I went into the Army, and, and when I got back from overseas, uh, I moved back to Frisco and uh, spent several years starting a family, raising a family, and building a business. Mm -hmm. And never thought much about masonry. And one of my dad's best friends, uh, Mr. Bill McCallum, who's a member of Lebanon Lodge, uh, was at my shop in Prosper. I had a welding shop up there and he brought a project up there. We were working on it. And uh, something came to my mind, uh, a question I had about masonry and, and I asked him and he put his tool down and he said, Dave, your dad and I has been waiting 20 years for you to ask that question. <laughs> wow, okay. And so, and so that's, that's what it takes. That's when I started. That is literally what it takes. Okay. My, my experience, uh, my interest in it is uh, knowing about American history and all that started the foundation of this country irrespective of the politics of it. The Constitution of our United States was based on the Masonic Constitution of 1717 and when I learned that at a really early age, about 17 or 18, I thought it was interesting with written rules that men can behave. Um, as I got a little older, Mark Twain said, the older I get the smarter my father becomes and I started to watch how a lot of men uh, had a common denominator in their behavior when they met one another. Hmm? Right. And it's in that I came to know that they were Masons. So I asked one, I said, what are you? And, and that's when my journey began, 1998. So what do you think are the most important decisions that are made within the Masonic Lodge? Like what are the most important and impactful things that you feel that your lodge is doing for the community here in Frisco? Well, that's that's a that's a good and deep question. Our intention with every every meeting. David is a past master as well. I'm a past master. I'm out serving again. David has uh, other levels of experience, and a lodge is a very unique uh, entity. It really is. It's a place where gentlemen just and I use the word gentlemen yes. come together to set their manners in motion, and it's generally done in silence. Ego shouts and love whispers. Yes. And that's the premise of how I see our work is. So we're looking for charity to offer our services to and it's not big and pronounced and since we're pretty much a smaller lodge with fewer funds we look for those around us that are in need it could be a masonic friend or someone who knows a masonic friend okay uh, because we know that with that masonic connection there is uh, there is virtue in it okay so how can our audience get involved if they want to find out more about the masons and lebanon lodge 837 uh, go to friscomasons.org and uh, our story is there. A petition is there if you're interested, gentlemen, to uh, become Mason. Uh, it is a very exclusive club. Uh, I'm not sure if we can give email addresses here, but yes, it's secretary please. at fiscalmasons.org. Okay. Uh, or myself, BillForeman1 at gmail.com. Or David Barnes at. Uh TD Barnes 49. <laughs> I love Gino. it. David doesn't even know his email address. <laughs> he doesn't email That's himself. That's all right. Yeah, yeah it's uh, all good. TD Barnes 49 at Juno.com. Well, fantastic. Well, congratulations to you both again you. on 120 years. That is a major accomplishment. And thank you both for being here with me today.